Law Dustin Coberson will lead us in an opening prayer, and Keith will call on someone at the end of the service for a closing prayer. I guess all of us know Brother Vance is from Double Springs, Alabama, and you said you've been there 36 years? 36 years. Now that, that, that's, that's amazing. You've got to study and read a lot to stay somewhere 36 years, and I know how much they love him. But thank you so much for being here, and Brother Keith will lead us in songs, and looking forward to this, let's sing out, please. Thank you.
to be able to spend time together in your word, to be able to learn from your word, and to be able to spend time together growing closer to you. Father, so thankful for Brother Keith leading us to sing it tonight. We pray that the songs that we have sung and we will sing will be glorifying to your name and uplifting to you, Father. Father, so thankful for Vance uh, and him coming and being here tonight. And we pray that you bless him and bless the lesson that he has prepared and pray that it impacts our lives. But not only here in this building, but as we go out into this world and to our communities. So thank you for this congregation here at Spring Valley and pray that you bless it and bless the members. And pray that they can be that beacon of light to this area and throughout the world. Father, I pray that you be with us as we go through the rest of the service. And I pray that you be with us as we leave here tonight. Forgive us always. lead us on. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I appreciate so much your presence. Um, I think next year on uh, Saturday night before you have singing, I told some people at Double Springs today, I said, we're going to carry a bus. And uh, so it's just been a, a joy to participate in my feeble way with the singing. And uh, almost every meeting that I get to go to, there will be some new song. And tonight, give your cares to Jesus. That's precious. Why? You think about people who have blessed us with the ability to put words together and some to put music to that, and it's just wonderful. And um, we are the beneficiaries of it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dustin, for that beautiful prayer. Dustin answered 
my prayers. Uh, I prayed for my girls that they would find somebody that would help them go to heaven. And um, Dustin surely is feeling that. And we appreciate him so much. And he and our daughter Faith and their three children are with us tonight. And uh, thank them for coming. So good to see uh, Hattons and Tittles here from different parts of this area, from White House and uh, from Florence area. And uh, met his aunt yesterday. Uh, and uh, I don't think they're able to be here tonight. I know it's, a, it's really a challenge for some folks that have a lot of health struggles uh, to be here, and we're thankful for their examples. But uh, Hattons are very special people, and their precious daughter, Lily Popper, is with us tonight. She's growing up. She's not as I keep thinking of her being about five or six years old. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> sweet mother-in-law, uh, Jeanette Tittle, has been such an inspiration to me uh, for many, many years. Uh, and I appreciate so much uh, our paths that crossed even before I moved to Double Springs, actually. Um, her husband uh, and I played softball together uh, when I preached at Bear Creek, and that's been more than 36 years ago. And um, as we just sung, the hair has turned loose, not necessarily to silver, <laughs> uh, but uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of we had a lot of fun. But thank you for being here. I know that's not why you came tonight. Uh, we did get Keith to lead one extra song. I told him about that guy that led 13 songs at Dovertown, and uh, he felt a little cheated. He ought at least get to sing one or two more. <laughs> and uh, but he's. Thank you for the wonderful meal this evening. Uh, I was preaching a meeting in Tuscaloosa a few weeks ago, and I told them my doctor had just put me on cholesterol medicine, and uh, I really uh, have to kind of practice a little more discipline than I used to, and uh, so uh, you all making that hard for me this week by feeding me every week, but I'm enjoying every spoonful, And uh, but thank you. Our lesson for tonight is entitled The Great levelers of life. You think about how much disparity there is in our world. You think about differences in wealth, education, popularity, status, uh, power, or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of disparity, but it's always been that way. I think of the statement of the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 and verse 9 uh, when the Lord had asked her to, for a drink and uh, she was just amazed that, that a Jew would ask her something like that. And she said, you know, uh, the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And uh, there was a quite bit of disparity between the two, at least in their thoughts. Jesus said in Matthew 26 and verse 11, that you have the poor with you always. And uh, so... Uh, you think about uh, different levels. I think in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, we, we find the rich and the poor, the small and the great, and the bond and free, all mentioned in the same verse. The Bible says, even on that great day of judgment, in Revelation 20, and verse 12, John said, I saw the dead small and great. So there is some disparity, and it, it's not necessarily sinful. Uh, it can be in that realm, but not necessarily has to be. You remember in Luke 16, we find the account of what we refer to as the rich man and Lazarus. And you remember how the rich man was clothed in purple and he fared uh, every day like we did tonight, like we did yesterday. And you can't afford to fare like that every day, but he did. And, uh, and then there was this man that was poor and was laid, evidently couldn't walk. The Bible says he was laid at uh, at the gate, begged for the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. And uh, you just think about the gap between the two. But yet there are some levelers in life. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 9, uh, let not the mighty man glory in his might. You need to realize there, there's, a, there's a leveler out there. Uh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom or the rich man glory in his riches. 
James chapter 1, James said in verse 9, Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. And let the rich man rejoice in the fact that he is made low. Because he needs to realize that just like a flower, even in his wealth, he's going to fade away someday. In Galatians chapter 3, in verse 26 through 28, Paul said, There's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, but we're all one in Christ Jesus. So there are some levelers uh, in life. I, I think about uh, in Matthew chapter 6, uh, you think about those that gave to be seen of men, prayed to be heard of men, or to be seen of men, and fasted to be seen of men. And the Lord said, if you do that, you know, there, there's a leveling that'll take place. And he said, you'll get a reward, but it's only here. It's only in this life and not where it really, really matters. There are some things in common, we would say. Jude said, in Jude verse 3, he said, I had intention to write to you about the common salvation. And you think about how that we all need that. That's something that we in common uh, have a need of. Paul talked about uh, common temptations in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. So there are some levelers. In Matthew 23, 11 and 12, uh, Jesus said, Whosoever be great among you, let him be your servant. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted, and he that exalts himself shall be abased. There's there, there some leveling effect in different areas. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 13 and 14, this publican he prayed, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And he was elevated with forgiveness. The Bible says that he went down to his house justified. In James chapter 4, probably a passage that we'll look at more tomorrow night on the subject, possibility of draw nigh to God. Uh, he began that by saying, humble yourself and the Lord will lift you. Humble yourself and he'll exalt you. So there, there, there are levelers, but it's, it's easy sometimes to forget the levelers of life. I think about Belshazzar. Now, if you'd study the book of Daniel, you would know what happened to his father, or sometimes referred to as father or grandfather, uh, Bel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And you remember in Daniel chapter 3 what happened in Daniel 4 to Nebuchadnezzar. And then we come to Daniel chapter 5, and here is his son or grandson, and and. He's doing the same thing that his, that his daddy or granddaddy did. And, and he's trying to exalt himself. And, and Daniel says, you know, this, this vision that you've had of this writing on the wall, he says, you know, you, uh, man, the God in, in, in whose breath you have, uh, you've not glorified him. And it's just like your daddy, your granddaddy, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. And you remember how that in that writing it was interpreted that uh, he would be dethroned and he was actually slain uh, that night. And uh, you think about lots of other examples. I think about Diotrephes in 3 John. I mean, here he was a man that he, he kind of forgets the levelers of life. I mean, he, he loves to have the preeminence of among men. And uh, he, uh, can you imagine somebody that would speak maliciously against the apostle John, the apostle of love, the apostle whom the Lord loved, and it was many times referred to that way. And, and here is Diotrephes who would be so malicious toward the apostle of love. But that's what it'll do when you forget the leavening effect of life. The leveling, not leaven, but leveling. Uh, I think sometimes churches can be that way. I think about the church at Laodicea. I really believe that they forgot some of the great levelers of life. And you might not think it's possible, but it's possible for a church sometimes to feel the big I and the little you. You know, we're, we're the church uptown, and that's, that's the church over there across the tracks. And that's sad. That is, that is just very, very sad. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 26, Paul said there, there's not many mighty, not many wise, not many noble are called. Why? Well, sometimes it's because they don't realize some of the great levelers 
of life. And I, I think of other examples that would kind of fall in that category. You think of that publican in Luke chapter, uh, or the Pharisee rather, in Luke chapter 18, who said, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are. And, and he, he looked upon himself and he, he failed to see the great levelers of life. Stubby George was a preacher at Double Springs before me, died at age 59. I'm six years older than he was now uh, when he died. And uh, Stubby used to make this statement. He said a million dollars and a bale of hay will be worth the same on Judgment Day. I heard somebody else make this statement. They said the person that lives in a million dollar house and the person that lives in a 10 by 50. Now, you might not have ever seen a 10 by 50 mobile home, but I spent the night one time in a 10 by 50, and uh, I had to put my clothes on in the bed and get up the next morning. Uh, but we were down at Ralph, Alabama, and, uh, and, and I'm telling you. But I believe it was probably about a 10 by 50 the one time that I was privileged to eat in this widow lady's home in Cordova, Alabama, and it's one of the pleasant memories of my life. And I ate in a home in Tupelo, Mississippi one time, preaching a meeting there, probably in a house that may have cost a million dollars. But you know, when those two people die, they share the same size grave. Same size grave. It's easy for us to be proud sometimes. And there are different things can cause people to have pride. First Corinthians 10 verse 12 says, Let him that standeth take heed, lest he fall. Ezekiel said that Judah trusted in their own beauty. In Ezekiel 16 and verse 15. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Proverbs 31 and verse 20, 30. But the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. It's also easy sometimes to pity self and think that we're on a low spectrum and forget verses like Revelation 2 verse 9. Well, the Lord said to the church at Smyrna, I know your poverty. And that word means destitute. I know your poverty, but then he said, but you are rich. And you might think you're a nobody. And you're a somebody somebody that God loves. And there are blessings for you in Christ Jesus, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. And the Bible talks about the riches that are in Christ, Ephesians 3 verse 8. The Bible talks about the riches of grace, Ephesians 1 and verse 7. It talks about the exceeding riches of grace, Ephesians 2 verse 7. The Bible talks about uh, grace being abundant, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 14. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 15, Paul talks about exceeding abundant grace. So on either spectrum, there's danger. I can be proud or I can feel lower than I, than I should feel. The Bible says in Romans 12 and verse 3 that, uh, that we ought to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought. But the Bible says that we're to love ourselves, we're to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, Matthew 22, verse 39. But you just think about also that statement, Galatians 3, verse 6, verse 3, if a man thinks himself to be something when he's nothing, uh, he, he, dece he deceives himself. So I guess you could say that some people need to be brought up and some people need to be brought down. Some see themselves as a nobody and they're a somebody. And some see themselves in one sense as a somebody. And in another sense they are a nobody. A little boy one time had a tree house. I guess every boy at some point in childhood wants a tree house. <laughs> and this little boy had a tree house. And on that tree house were three lines with writing. One line said... Nobody think big. Second line said, nobody think little. Third line said, everybody think medium. Well, there's a lot of wisdom to that. But I want to notice with you now, we'll go through them real quickly. I want to notice with you some of the great levelers of life. 
Number one, sufferings, frailties, and diseases. We're all made with feet of clay. In 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1, the Bible tells us about a man, and he was a captain of the army. And the Bible says that he was honorable, and the Bible says that he was a man of valor. But you know what the last phrase of that verse says? But he was a leper. Now, if that won't kind of humble a fellow, but he was a leper. In Luke 17, we have an account of 10 lepers. Some of them were Jews, and at least one of them was a Samaritan. Remember that woman said in John 4 that the Jews had no dealings with Samaritans? Well, leprosy had kind of broken down that barrier. And leprosy had kind of put them on the same playing field. And they were together. And you think about sufferings and frailties of life. There's some of you that have suffered with cancer. Some of you have suffered with heart problems. Some of you have lost mates with heart struggles. And, and, uh, and there's more in this room than you'd think of sat in the office and the doctor tell you that you've got cancer. I think of Paul in 2 Corinthians 12. You know, he said, it'd be easy for me to be exalted. But he said, there's a thorn in the flesh that kind of brings me down. It's, it's level to play and fail. Now think about Epaphroditus in Philippians 2, the great person that he was. The Bible said he was sick nigh unto death. Think about Paul, uh, Timothy rather, and his stomach problem. Think about Trophimus left in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 20, sick at Miletus. Think about John chapter 11. And here's a family that loved the Lord. And Lazarus is sick and then dies. You think about storms and you think about accidents and crimes and violence and just the unknown that we know not what will be on the morrow. Proverbs 27 and verse number 1. And that's a, quite a powerful leveler. CEOs that make millions struggle with pancreatic cancer and ALS and leukemia and Alzheimer's and heart attacks and so many things. The rich, the poor, the educated, the uneducated, the powerful, the weak, all struggle with frailties and diseases and accidents. It's a great leveler of life. Number two, Think about the aging process and how the aging and death level us. Now, they've not come up with a birthday control pill as far as I know. When they do, we'll be standing in line to get it, won't we? Well, some have said, Psalm 37, verse 25, I have been young, but now I'm old. And young folks, let me tell you something. That'll happen to you quicker than you think. You remember in Acts 7, verse 58, Saul, later to be the Apostle Paul, he is referred to as a young man. Read the book of Philemon when he writes to Philemon and read in Philemon in verse number 9, and Paul refers to himself as Paul the Aged. Now he went from a young man to Paul the Aged, and that can happen pretty quickly. And it is a leveler of life. You know, it just amazes me sometimes to, uh, uh, you know, and I see it in myself already, certainly. Man, I used to, my daddy used to say, to say about me, he said, that boy didn't open, he didn't open gates. He jumped them. Well, I don't jump as high as I used to. Not nearly as high. It amazes me now what I can trip over. Now, you just think about, now that has a leveling effect. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16, the outward man is perishing. Psalm 39 and verse 4, Lord help me to know mine end, the measure of my days, that I may know how frail I am. The days of our years are three score and ten. They be by reason of strength be four score. Strength, labor, and sorrow, and we're soon cut off and we fly away. 
You know, in Isaiah 6, it's, it's interesting here. This chapter begins by saying, in the day that King Uzziah died. Kings die too, don't they? They grow old and they die. And we all do. From the king to the peasant in the field. Isaiah told Hezekiah, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. It's an appointment we'll all keep, and we don't know when that time will come. Hebrews 9, verse 27. A leveler of life. Number three, the uncertainty of things levels us. In Jonah chapter 4, Jonah watches, uh, and he has his priorities quite out of order, uh, but he watches a, a gourd, and this gourd grows up real quickly, and it provides him some shade. And it's a day like today. It's hot. And uh, he gets under the shade, and then God sends a worm. And uh, I wonder if it was a boar worm uh, that got in that plant and, and uh, killed that man. And uh, but God said something about that. He said, Jonah, are you grieving over that gourd? You ought to be grieving over Nineveh. They had 120,000 people that don't know their right hand from the left, possibly talking about little children. And he said, you're concerned about something that came up in the night and perished in the night. Now, how many things in this old world have that gourd written all over them? They come up in the night and they perish in the night. In Revelation chapter 18 is a picture of the fall of Babylon, Babylon which certainly was representative uh, symbolic of another town and he talked about all the the precious stones and the precious wood and the precious uh, you know perfumes and I mean it was just everything mentioned that's a value and then he said in Revelation 18 and verse 17 they all perished in an hour you think about that in an hour Proverbs 23 and verse 5 says that riches can mount wings like eagles and fly away. How many of you have had money maybe in a 401k or stock market mutual fund or something? And man, the bottom just fall out of it. And you think, oh, man. You know, when you get my age and that happens to you, you might not have time for that to ever recoup. <laughs> uh, but... I mean, it can happen. And jobs, you think about jobs that are so uncertain. My brother that got killed three years ago, man, my heart just went out for him. Uh, he had worked at Monarch Tile Company, and they made some big cuts, you know, and he voluntarily uh, left that job to go to another job and went over here to Hillshire Farms. He had worked at Monarch for about 20 years, and over at Hillshire Farms, they just come in one day and say, we're shutting the place down, 1,100 people, go home. And, uh, you know, a guy 50-something uh, years old and you're out looking for a job. And uh, it's, there's so much uncertainty of things that are around us. First Timothy 6, 17, Paul said, Charge them the rich in this world's goods that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches. You know, fire and wind and water. I mean, just think about what that can do. In Luke chapter 12, uh, you know, our riches might might kind of stay and then we might leave them. This man, tonight, your soul will be required and then who shall these things be? So, it's a leveler of life. Number four, think about being made in the image of God. Yeah, you might be here tonight and you might feel, you know, I, I'm a nobody. No. You're made in the image of God. Our brother over here, good little book that he put together about purpose and he talks about you know, that we've been made in the image of God and we've been given a spirit that is eternal, just like our Father is eternal. And friend, I don't care. You might not have, uh, you might not even have a bank account. But I'm telling you, you got a soul that is worth more than the world. Matthew 16 and verse number 26. And you bear the image of God and you are special. And when death comes, your spirit's going to be ushered Seems to me, Luke 16, God send the angels to pick it up and usher you to the Hadean realm, to Abraham's bosom of paradise. But just think about how that you're special, and that is a leveler. 
that we've been made in the image of God. As a little girl said one time, God don't make junk. So you're not junk. Number five, I think about the leveler of man's accountability to God. You know, there's a lot of people out here in this old world, and they're just cocky, and, and uh, you know, they feel like they're not accountable to anybody. But I'll tell you one thing. There will be a time when they will confess the Lordship of Christ. It's going to happen because we're all accountable to him. And it's one of the great levelers of life that God made us. And we're going to give account to him. You know, not only did God make us, Matthew 19, verse 4, he made us, but in verse 5 it says, and God said, God's had something to say to us, and we're accountable for what he has said to us. Fear God and keep his commands. This is the whole of man, Ecclesiastes 12, and verse number 13. And that very will of his will judge us at the last day, John 12 and verse 48. Well, another thing that's a great leveler of life, and that is the guilt of sin. You know, we may be too proud to admit it. We may be deceived and not realize it. But we all have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, all accountable. Romans chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. There's not a just man on the face of the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 20. There's a question in Psalm 130 and verse 3. If thou shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? If God looked at this group tonight and this audience tonight and every accountable person here and everybody stands up and he says, Now, everybody that has not sinned, you remain standing and everybody else sit down. There wouldn't be anybody left standing, would he? Because it's one of the great levelers of life that we all have become guilty of sin. That leads to our next one, and that is the need of mercy, of God's mercy. It's a great leveler of life. You know, we need his care. I mean, how, how could we make it without his sunshine and his rain? I mean, we need his care. And you think about those blessings that he showers upon us physically. We need his counsel. I mean, Jeremiah 10, 23, Oh, Lord, I know it's not within man that walks to direct his own steps. I need his counsel. I need his compassion. In 2 Timothy 1, Paul prayed for Onesiphorus, and he said, I pray that he may obtain mercy in that day. It's a great level of life. We all need it. And I tell you, you study the life of Onesiphorus, and if he needed it, this old boy needs it a whole lot more. A great leveler of life, our need of mercy. I understand, I never have met one, I don't think, that there are billionaires in the world. But I have seen people in the country of Burma and Myanmar plowing a pair of water buffalo and sometimes a pair of oxen. And you know that billionaire or that person in Burma plowing a pair of water buffalo or oxen, they have in common their need of God's mercy. We all stand on common ground at the foot of the cross great levelers of life. The worth of your soul is a great leveler of life. You just think about the price of redemption that was paid for it. And each person is worth so much to the Lord that Jesus would die. I really believe if you were the only person on the face of the earth that needed mercy, Jesus would have left heaven for you or for me. And Paul would say, the Lord loved me, Galatians 2.20, and die for me. And you think about how that that love itself levels us. It's a great leveler of life that God has loved all of us. And you might think, you know, that nobody loves you. The Lord loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. You are loved. 
you are precious to our God. Think about the blessings that are in Christ. Our brother mentioned that a little bit ago. It's one of the great levelers of life. You just think about the blessings that are in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 1 verse 3. You know, boy, when you think about Christianity, it is something special. I remember one time hearing a sermon. I hope I'm, I'm going to start it, and I hope I can give you all eight points of it. But I, I heard this sermon preached by a man by the name of Frank Cheshire. I don't know if any of you have ever met Frank Cheshire, but I'm telling you, that is some more preacher. Uh, he's kind of like Mike Vestal. If you've ever heard Mike Vestal, I heard Mike Vestal last week. And uh, people like me just dream of preaching like them guys. But Brother Cheshire talked about the uniqueness of New Testament Christianity. And he talked about our unique God. Number two was our unique Savior. Number three was our unique revelation, the Bible. Number four was the unique church to, to be a part of. Number five was a unique scheme of redemption. Number six was the unique worship. Number seven was a unique way of life. And number eight was a unique hope of the soul. And you just think about the blessings that are in Christ Jesus. And it's one of the great levelers of life. As I said a while ago, you might not have very much of this world's goods. And you know preachers are blessed. And I've seen some preachers who work for almost nothing. And um, somebody said the other day, you know, in Acts chapter 3, and, and there's preachers here, brother back to back, you know, he preached 60-something years, and, and uh, Sonny's preached now for uh, probably close to 50 years, and... and uh, and, and there, there are some that they work for pretty menial means through the years. And I knew a man one time that he was Gus Nichols' son-in-law. And he had come from uh, preaching in Illinois to his retirement years to come back to Alabama. And, and his life savings uh, was very, very nominal. And, uh, but a preacher told me here a while back in Acts chapter 3, what Peter said, he said, not true of preachers now. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto you. And he said, preachers can't say that anymore because they are paid quite well in most circumstances. I'm sure that's not the case at all. Uh, but you just think about kind of uh, the blessings that, that we have now uh, compared to years ago. And most of us can't say that we're in poverty and might not be any of us here tonight. But if you could say that, like the church at Smyrna, the Lord said to them, but you are rich. And the way that they were rich had to be the blessings that they had in Christ and the hope that they had of even a mansion. We sang the song of a night, a mansion, a robe, and a crown. Now, I'm telling you, now you're, you're quite blessed when that's laid up for you, okay? But number whatever next is, you think about the great leveler of the judgment. Now, we're, we're, we're going to the judgment. And you think about that, that's one of the great levelers of life, that we're going to all stand before the Lord in judgment and give an account for the way we've lived. Now, that person over here that's high and mighty and cocky, hey, man, nah, that's not going to happen to me. I'm not, I, I don't give account to anybody. Oh, you might get by with some of that in this life, but you, you'll not escape that person when he's being carried by six men to the cemetery. He doesn't look like he's too good a shape to stand up in the face of God. We're going to give an account to the Lord in the great day of judgment. Thinkest thou that thou should escape the judgment of God, Romans chapter 2 and verse number 3. And I, I think about the Lord in judgment. And I think about that statement in Matthew 11, and I think about us. When the Lord said to those three Jewish cities where he had done many mighty works, Bethsaida, Chorazin, and Capernaum, and you think about how much is said, especially that was done in Capernaum or around Capernaum, and the Lord said to them, you know, 
It's going to be more tolerable on the day of judgment. You're going to receive, receive sore punishment than did Tyre and Sidon and Sodom. And you think about us with all of our physical blessing and all of our spiritual blessing and our opportunities and our wealth. I'm telling you, it's kind of a sobering thing to think about what the Lord said in Matthew chapter 11 about the judgment. And it's one of the great levelers of life. The next to last, think about heaven. Heaven is a great leveler of life. My brother that was here last night, and I saw him last Wednesday night over at Florence Boulevard, born with spina bifida. My sister lived 14 days and died of spina bifida, but brother Alan, I was named Alan, was here last night. Now you just think about it. Heaven's going to be sweet for him, isn't it? going to be sweet for him. It's one of the great levelers of life. I'm telling you, God's going to reward us. Now, we don't deserve it. It'll be by grace. We understand that. But it's going to be sweet. And that wonderful place that we talked about last night, Luke 16, 25, I know this is paradise here, but it's precious too. What Abraham said about Lazarus to the rich man, now he is comforted. All back there in life, he couldn't even ward off the dogs from licking his sores, and he couldn't walk, and he had to beg for the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. But now, great leveler of life, look what he has now. James said in James chapter 1 and verse 12, Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised unto them that love him. He said in chapter 2 and verse 5, Hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs? Just think about that. You might not inherit anything. When your mom and dad die, I know we have one of the sweetest guys at Double Springs you'd ever meet. And he told me one time, he said, you know, when mom and dad had passed away, he said, there wasn't one copper. There wasn't one single cent. He said, we didn't have any family feud over anything because there wasn't one single copper. But now you might be the same way, but you just think about the inheritance that the Bible talks about to the Christian incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. My, that's when the person is exalted. But then this last one, hell is a great leveler of life too. You think about that person out there who has lived his life given to sin. When you praise God, he curses God. When you do good, he does evil. Hell, great leveler of life. God offers to bear the punishment for our sins in his own son and to pay the penalty that we owe. But if we reject that, we have to pay our own penalty. And that's hell. One of the great levelers of life, that day when the smoke of their torment descendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. So tonight, great levelers of life. Some of you might feel that you're a nobody, but you are somebody. I hope there's not one here tonight who feels, I have no need for God. Please examine even what we've talked about tonight. I hope we have nobody here that thinks of themselves as a big I and a little you. I don't care how much education you've got, how much wealth you have. We must be humble. And I hope that we are leveled 
by things we've talked about tonight. Dan Winkler made this statement one time. Humble we must be if to heaven we go. The ceiling is high, but the door is low. The Bible says in Galatians 5 and verse 13, By love let us serve one another. Paul said in Philippians 2 verse 3 and 4, Look not every man on his own things, but on the things of others. And let each esteem the other better than himself. I have struggles that you don't know about. And for my feeling toward you is that as far as I know, you don't have those struggles. And in that sense, I need to see you as better than me. Think about the riches that we have in Christ. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. It's by the grace of God that we are what we are. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9 and 10. Great levelers of life. Are you a Christian tonight? Do you realize what the Lord longs to give you? That you could be his child. Look what you'd become. Look what you'd receive. Forgiveness of sin. You know, it's ten till almost within this hour. It'd take a, probably a little more than 10 minutes for us to sing this song and you to get ready and Sonny to baptize you into Christ. But that quickly, you could become a New Testament Christian, a part of the precious church of our Lord and receive forgiveness of sins. Paul said in Romans chapter 5, immediate blessings. You'd have hope. You have access into this grace wherein we stand and you could rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You've heard his word. Don't you believe it? Is there a precious soul here tonight that needs to act on that faith and seek forgiveness through repentance and confessing the sweet name of Jesus before this group tonight and being baptized for the remission of your sins? If you've not been faithful, an opportunity to come home, to come back to the Lord. And the Lord promises that he will run to meet you as together we stand and as we sing. Um.